Embraer E-Jets are the most popular regional jets in the world. Almost every major airline uses them as they offer unbeatable fuel efficiency and comfort for passengers with the 2-2 configuration. Since their introduction in 2001, E-Jets has proved themselves in every possible condition. So when Embraer announced the E-2 series in 2013, everybody in the industry thought that it would repeat the success of its predecessor. However, the reality turned out to be much worse. Watch this video to learn about the reason for such a spectacular failure, especially in the very important American market. The initial E-Jets, or the E-1 generation, as it's now the official name given by Embraer, were the true revolution in the skies upon their introduction. They have been designed not only as a replacement for the older regional jets such as Fokker 100 or British Aerospace 146, which weren't popular outside of Europe, but also as a completely new segment in the market, potentially replacing the MD-80s and 737s on regional routes to hub airports. Embraer E-Jets simply allowed airlines to expand their business to smaller cities and significantly enhance capacity to the bigger ones. Previously, these kinds of flights were operated mainly by smaller and slower turboprops, including the Embraer 120, the first fully commercial Embraer project. The popularity of the E-1 family can be demonstrated by this table. Embraer 170, 175, 190, and 195 were ordered almost 2,000 times by the airlines on all continents except Antarctica. All of this led to the announcement of the new generation. During the 2013 Paris Air Show, Embraer launched the E-2 program, featuring several improvements over the original planes, most notably the new geared turbofan engine with a significantly larger fan diameter also used in the A320neo and 737 MAX families. This engine is in fact even four inches more in diameter than the almost twice as big 737 MAX. The other main differences include redesigned wings, smaller stabilizers, and an improved cockpit. All of this results in an almost 20% lower fuel burn compared to the previous generation. The cost per trip is also 20% lower compared to the A320neo and 10% lower than its main competitor, the Airbus A220. Now you may think that it is so good that airlines are fighting for delivery slots, as it's currently the case with widebody planes. Unfortunately, that isn't true and Embraer is instead begging the airlines to buy this plane, however with rather mediocre results. The total order count for all Embraer E2 variants as of October 2024 stands at 354 units, among them 302 E195, only 52 E190, and 0 E175. The smallest E170 is not included in the new generation as it was deemed inefficient. You may find out why in my previous video about this topic. So these numbers are a complete failure for Embraer, as the company estimates that it needs to sell over 700 units for the program to be profitable, and more than six years have elapsed since the introduction into service, so this is not a completely new aircraft now. There are a few reasons that make the Embraer E2 a slow seller. First, let's take a closer look at the U.S. aviation market. In the United States, regional flying operates rather uniquely compared to most of the world, with large airlines contracting out service operations to smaller regional airlines. The three major U.S. airlines, United, Delta, and American, all partner with smaller carriers such as SkyWest, Horizon, or Mesa for regional operations. However, as regional jet pilots are often paid far less than their full-service counterparts, Airline pilot unions fiercely negotiate how regional subcontractors can fly, and a scope clause is one of the results of these negotiations. Scope clause is a part of a contract between a major airline and the trade union of its pilots that limits the number and size of aircraft that may be flown by the airline's regional airline affiliate. It simply prevents the airline from outsourcing most of its flights to cheaper contractors. Currently, the scope clause limits regional jets to no more than 76 seats and a maximum takeoff weight of under 86,000 pounds. And this is the answer for zero orders of the E-175-E2. The older generation E-175 is the most popular E-Jet in the US. Out of 764 aircraft ever produced, around 650 are flying for the regional carriers in America. 
So it's no surprise that orders from the United States matter the most when it comes to this aircraft. Unfortunately, the E-175E2 proposed maximum takeoff weight is around 98,000 pounds and passenger capacity is around 80 to 90 seats. This is not compliant with the scope clause and is a crucial reason that the project has been paused. Embraer is now waiting to see if the agreement changes. In the meantime, airlines from the US ordered 170 Embraer 175s in the older variant, however with redesigned winglet design. Embraer predicts that it may take even 10 years for the scope clause to change, so the older generation will be the only one flying in the US. The Embraer 190 and 1995 are not popular in the US for the same reason, and this also resulted in a situation where United, Delta, and American simply rejected the entire E2 family, waiting for a scope clause change. Delta chose the A220s instead and operates the under mainline brand. However, the airline is open to replacing the older generation E-175s with the new version once the situation allows. The other problem with the Embraer E-2s are the issues with the Pratt & Whitney 1900G engine. This leads to a huge amount of aircraft being grounded waiting for engine inspections or replacement. Pratt & Whitney's GTF engines are designed to reduce fuel consumption and increase efficiency and are not only used in the Embraer E-2 family, but also in aircraft such as the Airbus A220 and some A320neos. However, the problem uncovered in July 2023, particularly metal powder contamination, has led to widespread disruptions. Due to this, many airlines such as KLM or Helvetic had to take the newest Embraer out of service. This also prevents many airlines from ordering the E2 as they simply want to avoid costs resulting from flight cancellations and aircraft groundings. As a result, they prefer to stick to the older generation aircraft for the time being. However, in the long term, the Embraer E2 will definitely gain more popularity, as it has no direct competition in the smallest segment. As the CRJ production ended in 2020, airlines that will want to keep aircraft with 100 seats in their fleet will be simply forced to buy new Embraers sooner or later. And remember that it's the smallest available aircraft on the market as there are no new planes that would be able to replace the 50-seat jets, such as CRJ-200, which are still widely used in the US. As for the bigger segment, Airbus A220 is definitely a competitor to Embraer E195E2, and it seems that it's winning the race against Brazilian manufacturer as the total orders count stands at 912, so almost three times more than Embraer E2. One of the reasons for that is the fact that this aircraft is simply bigger with up to 145 seats and as a result has slightly lower cost per seat. I explained this in my video about the aircraft size paradox. As you see, Embraer is facing many challenges with its newest jet. The sales are not going as previously expected and the American pilots unions are opposing the introduction of the newest generation aircraft to the airline's fleet. However, Everything will change in the future, as airlines will be simply forced to buy Embraers for the regional market segment. Thanks for watching. Remember to write your opinion about this topic in the comments below and subscribe to my channel.